Welcome back. I'm Curtis Smith, and with me today is Janine Fales, a master gardener from Los Alamos, who's going to help us with our mailbag. And we've got a number of questions to look at. First one deals with corn. We got an email from Carlos in Santa Fe who said, I picked my sweet corn today and noticed that there were very few kernels present. Why? Well, uh, Carlos, um, corn is wind pollinated, and so each, each one of these silks that comes out has to be pollinated to create a kernel of corn. Um, you see part of it is very well uh, pollinated, but uh, that's one of the reasons we plant corn in blocks is because, uh, because it is when pollinated, you can get the pollination to where you need. The other thing that I do is I uh, go out into my garden and I'll uh, vibrate the corn stalk and uh, the pollen will drop from the tassel down to the silks. Or you can even go to the extreme of putting some pollen into a, a dish and then using a, a brush if you have a very small uh, corn patch. Brushing it onto the ends of each of these silks as right. they come out. That's right. That's so, right. And that's what's wrong. It's just poor pollination. And it's a little early for this corn right now, but mm -hmm. yeah, it's a poor pollination problem. Yeah. So that was, the wind wasn't blowing properly or this wasn't planted in a block or something like right, that. Right, right. Okay, right. we've got another question. This one came from Alice in Los Alamos who said, my tomatoes look like they've been cut and then healed over. What's wrong? Oh, tomatoes, especially in Los Alamos, uh, people complain a lot about tomatoes. Um, there are several problems. This is a watering problem. There are other things that, you, and it's called cat facing. There are other things that you can see, especially on tomatoes. Blossom end rot is a uh, calcium problem, again, due to watering. Anytime you cycle the water between dry and very wet, uh, especially with tomatoes, you'll have some problems. The third thing that you might see on tomatoes, on red tomatoes, is cracking. Again, the tomatoes already set its size, and it gets a real influx of water, and it results in cracking. So there are three kinds of things on tomatoes that uh, can come just from watering problems. We yeah. also have a, a butternut squash here, and that's similar. Um, see the cracks starting to develop on the squash in several different places. Again, I feel that this squash had set its size already, and then got too much water, and as a result, the skin is cracking. Yeah, the skin got tough. It filled with water, put pressure on it, mm -hmm. and the skin couldn't hold up against it, so it just split. Okay, and we've got another one now. This one is from uh, Capil in Los Alamos. Mm -hmm. And what's wrong with this nectarine? She sent us a sample. It really doesn't look good. Yeah, it looks pretty sad. Um, there's big cracks in it, um, there's some goo coming out, and this is actually just hail damage. We've had a couple of huge hail st storms in Los Alamos this year. Um, not much you can do, especially on a tree, on things like tomatoes and things you can put a hail cover over, you could, uh, you could do better, but there's not much you can do just about hail at random times of the year, especially on a fruit tree. Be aware, and the splitting then may be water related, mm -hmm. the irrigation again. And we've got a final question, we've got a big plant here. Way. And this is a tomato plant that was sent in by uh, Jack in Berlin. And he said that his tomato plant died from the top down. Okay, this is, this is actually one that's a, been a really uh, sad thing in Los Alamos as well. It affected my own garden. I took out half of my plants because of this. This is caused by curly top virus. Um, the, the plant starts dying from the top down. It goes relatively fast. Um, we could probably Under some circumstances, sometimes it takes a while. Yeah, yeah, sometimes it takes a while. In fact, I think some of my plants out there probably still have it. One of the things you'll notice is it is uh, ripening the fruits, although that's definitely not the size the fruits are supposed <laughs> to be on this early girl uh, plant. So, so you get kind of uh, underdeveloped um, but ripening fruits, even though that's not what it's intended to do. Looks like we have the roots here, uh, Curtis. Is mm -hmm. there something we can... We can look. We can confirm that it is curly top okay. and not a vascular wilt. All right. First of all, we notice the roots are in good shape. Mm -hmm. And then what we'll often do if the plant's dying is slice into the stem mm -hmm. and look for discoloration. If we hold this up to the camera, where I cut it, we'll see that it's not discolored. Mm -hmm. And so it's not a vascular wilt that we have here. So curly top is a very likely case. Now, um, several people have asked me, and I, I guess they're delighted that my tomatoes had it too, because they thought <laughs> maybe they just killed their tomatoes, but um, they asked me whether the, if you buy a hybrid that's resistant to verticillium, uh, fusillarium, whether that is resistant to curly top. And it's not. And you, it's not. You'd be resistant to what we're looking for here, maybe. Okay. okay. But uh, 
And resistant doesn't mean immune. Right. So right. it means it is better able to resist it. But curly top is going to be a viral disease spread from some of the weeds that overwintered mm -hmm. by insects into the, into the tomatoes. Uh, insecticides don't help because it seems like that just aggravates them. They spread mm -hmm. it faster. Weed control helps. Controlling okay. your winter weeds is a good thing to do. Another item to consider here is that this is safe to compost. Mm -hmm. now, a lot of times you hear don't compost diseased plants. This disease is not spread in the soil. It's spread by insects, so this can be compost, not a problem. Janine, thank you. Sure.